Well, I'm looking forward to our denominations general conference in Chicago in 2013. In fact, if Mark's schedule allows it and he's able to join me, we hope to stick around for a few extra days and make a vacation of it. But travel can be expensive. And so we've been looking into the different options for getting to the Windy City. One of the things to consider when traveling is the baggage fee that carriers charge. Take, for example, Delta Airlines. Delta charges $25 for the first checked baggage and $35 for a second. Checked bags must weigh less than 50 pounds, and an extra bag that goes over the limits will involve a charge ranging from $90 to $300. Bags weighing more than 100 pounds are not permitted. Due to the expense of air travel, Mark and I are considering taking a train to Chicago. Not only would it be a new experience for us, but it wouldn't be so rushed and it would be cheaper. Although no bags may weigh more than 50 pounds, each ticketed passenger may check up to three pieces of luggage at no charge and up to three additional pieces may be checked upon payment of just $10 per piece. You and I have our own baggage that we carry around with us throughout our lives. In fact, some of us have been carrying it around for so long and have gotten so accustomed to it that we hardly notice it at all. We don't notice its weight or its cost to us to haul it around. It's not as obvious as the luggage that we carry onto a train or an airplane because it's emotional. Our baggage is emotional baggage and carrying it around through life comes with its own price. But if we could let go of our emotional luggage, our emotional baggage, then life would be easier. In fact, Jesus invited his followers to do just that when he said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. The emotional baggage that you and I carry around keep us weighed down in our past instead of living fully in the moment. We are still in relationship with people in our past. Maybe even people who have long since passed away. And this keeps us from experiencing healthy relationships in the here and now. Resentment of real or imagined wrongs that might have been done to us lock us into the past and we find ourselves replaying over and over again the wrong that has been done to us. We aren't in right relationship with the wrongdoer. And when we read the words from this morning's passage that remind us that there is a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, we can't possibly imagine embracing the person who has acted so wrongly to us. Fear is another piece of emotional baggage that unless we check it, will control our lives and keep us from living as freely as God intended for each of us. When we spend so much of our lives building up walls to protect ourselves from being hurt, we forget that those walls also shield us from taking a chance on love. Sometimes it's necessary to dismantle those walls that we have put so much energy into building up. And Ecclesiastes reminds us there is a time to break down those walls which we have spent a lifetime building up. Grief is another piece of baggage 
that can keep us from being as fully human as God has intended for us. Grief is certainly something that is natural, a process that each of us should go through when we experience loss. But grief can also be debilitating. We can get stuck in grief, and when that happens, we're no longer able to love as fully and deeply those people who are currently in our lives. Our scripture passage tells us there is a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. It's not the same for everyone. In fact, the timing is probably not the same for anyone. There are some of us for whom holding on to resentments are much dangerous than others. And so we do the work it takes to let go of those resentments as quickly as possible. And there are some people whose grief process takes a much longer time than it takes for other people. The timing's not the same for everyone. It's different for different people. And there are no rules. Unlike Amtrak, which has a policy for the size and weight of allowed carry-on baggage, there is no such policy or rules for emotional baggage. The only advice is to let go of as much emotional baggage as we possibly can. When we do that, we can live fully in the moment and we can appreciate the gift of life which God has given each of us. We can experience the new heaven and the new earth that is promised in our second reading from the book of Revelation. Life can be happy, joyous, and free instead of the drudgery, labor, and routine we've come to know. Ecclesiastes tells us there is a time for everything, and there's probably no better time to let go of our emotional baggage than today on New Year's Day. This is our opportunity to enter into the new year, enter into a new life with a clean slate. So in a few moments, I'm going to invite you to write down on the blank slip of paper inside your worship bulletins whatever may be keeping you from living fully in the moment, whether it's fear, resentment, or grief, whether it's shame, guilt, or a former love relationship, you're invited to write it down on the slip of paper. Then fold the paper so that no one can see what you've written on it. And when you come forward for communion, you can drop it in the bowl in front of the altar. After worship, we're going to take that bowl of baggage outside and burn them as a symbol of our letting go of the things that are keeping us from being in right relationship with God and with each other. And so now take a few moments to think of those things and offer them up to God. Offer them up and let them go. And may God bless you as you enter the new year with a clean slate. And I do have some pencils here. So.